Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here and welcome to 60 and Me. Welcome to a new day. Hope you're doing great. I have got my morning cup of tea here. I have, um, what do I have here? Oh, it's Lady Grey. Very elegant Lady Grey tea. It's actually Twinings tea. I think it's a, a blend of Earl Grey and bergamot oil. But anyway, it's a nice tea and I hope you've got a cup of coffee or tea with you. Or maybe you're drinking something healthy like a smoothie or um, some other juice that you've mixed up, some beautiful combination that you love. Um, I, I really wonder how you will start your day. I mean, I think we all have our little habits and I think how we get out of bed in the morning and the way we, you know, we start those first few thoughts, whether we meditate or do some exercise Size, cook some food or go for a walk I think it sets the tone for the day and I think we forget sometimes just how lucky we are that we've got the freedom and the opportunity to to have a, a day that we can create our, our rhythms and our patterns um, and we can make decisions about the the state of mind and the mood that we go into the day so do, do you find yourself waking up sometimes though in a kind of a, a negative state of mind, you know, where things are overwhelming you a bit and you're just feeling a little negative? You know, negative thoughts um, do pop into our minds all the time and believe it or not, it's not unusual. Um, there's actually a good reason for it and um, psychologists call it uh, the negativity bias. And this is because, you know, we are cave people at heart. I mean, in our human evolution, you know, we've, we've been through a, a lot, but so internally we haven't changed in some ways. And the truth is that we are kind of geared, we are, we are wired to remember negative situations and prioritize them rather than good ones just to, for survival. So for example, if you're a cave person, um, it's, it's better to remember where you almost got eaten by a tiger yesterday than some kind of nice conversation that you have with your, um, your, your neighbor in the next cave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it's just that we're 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 designed by nature to worry about things that are going to affect our health and our safety. So I think that's kind of a, a obviously that's a bit a bit of fun, but it's true in a way that it's okay to have um, you know um, constructive fears and to be cautious. However, sometimes we do find ourselves letting our negative thoughts get on top of us and get um, to the point where they overwhelm us. Um, I don't know about you, but um, I have a lot of friends on Facebook and a lot of them are going through some really tough times at the moment, as is a lot of the world. I mean, it's a very, very stressful time of life. And it's interesting, I was um, reading a book uh, recently by uh, Dr. Bill Thomas, who I interviewed just a few days ago. Um, his uh, book is called Second Wind. And it's a really interesting book about the, the movement, uh, the evolution of, of uh, boomers you know, where we started in the 1950s and then how our lives were shaped by media, by, by world events, by things that were going on in the, you know, in, in, around the world. And even though we didn't have, um, you know, a lot of, we didn't have the internet or a lot of communication vehicles, there, were, there was a lot of stress. I mean, when we, of course, the, the, the two world wars, but those were just almost uh, just two events in a whole network of, of local, regional wars and, um, and, uh, and upsets and disagreements, conflicts that we all went through as 60 year old women. I mean, I'm sure we can all remember back to lots of situations uh, where we had, where we were worried, you know, where there were things going on that really frightened us. and there was a natural negative bias to our experience. Anyway, his book is really interesting because it takes you through the influences that have affected boomers throughout our lives and then also talks about this transition now from what he calls adulthood into elderhood and uh, how we've coped with all those bumps along the way uh, and we've gained maturity as we went. So it's, it's an interesting book. But anyway, it reminded me though that the world almost always has had um, trauma and and negativity going on <laughs> it just seems to be human you know the human experience so i think it's really important that, to know that by the time we've reached age 60 we have had so many encounters with the world negative positive and in between you know we really um, lived life at, at all ends of the spectrum and you know there are some people that have grown from that i mean for example um uh, i moved a lot when i was a kid every year for about 10 years of my life every year i moved every single year and i'm sure that uh, some of you are nodding your heads same same with you and you know to move 30 times in your lifetime is not unusual anymore 
but I remember, um, you know, moving so much and how it made me strong. I mean, some people go the other way, but for me personally, having to make friends everywhere I went and start fresh every year gave me a confidence and a strength with strangers. I'm still a bit of an introvert in my little heart of hearts, <laughs> like many of you, but I, um, you know, for the most part, I'm good with people. And that, that negative experience, well, that experience that could be considered negative helped me. So the point here is that there are some people that d deal with um, stress differently. I, I know some people who are absolutely terrified to talk to someone on the bus, to talk to a stranger on the bus. In fact, I, I don't know, a lot of people are afraid to have a conversation with someone on the bus. And, um, you know, if there's an emergency or anything, there's very few people that will stand up and help or do something. There's this kind of fear factor. And I think that, you know, this prevents people from reaching out, making friends, you know, and establishing those social connections that we all know really, really help us. So it's almost like uh, we, we are afraid to do these things and in being fearful, we actually prevent ourselves from, well, from making friends and also developing the skills and the strength to, to you know, to do other things in our lives, to, for other parts of our life. So some people are afraid of getting injured, so they won't do any sports or any, any kind of uh, um, ex exercise or outdoor activity. Of course, we need to get healthy and fit, so that's, you know, being able to, to, to do these things walk or do some kind of sport is really important for our physical health. So in other words, sometimes our negativity can have an effect, effect on our physical well-being. So it's really important that, you know, if we, if we think about negativity and not just the feeling it makes us have, which is, you know, sad and stressful, but the way it stops us from living our lives fully, that's another way of, of considering it. So I think the first thing to do is recognize the thought. <laughs> recognize you're having a negative thought and own it. You know, own it in a way that's constructive. So for example, if you're on a bus and you have an encounter with someone that makes it feel negative, just somehow say, okay, done. That person has, you know, has had a bad day. I'm now going to remember that most of the people I spoke to today or had any encounter with or any people I'm going to speak to are going to be great. They're going to be normal people, just like me, normal people. And that one person does not shape my, my, um, my identity or does not, it's not personal. I'm, I'm going to move on. So that's, you know, stopping a negative thought by owning it, by just accepting it and saying, well, that was, you know, I, I, I could have gone off on that or that could have bothered me all day, but I'm not going to let it. It's, it's done. That's the first thing. Another thing is to, uh, you get better at recognizing your negativity bias. And then just, you know, like for example, if you fall on ice, say you're walking along and you fall on ice, you can say, you know, oh, that, that made me so cross or that was like a, a bad sign. The whole day is going to be like this. I'm going to have one accident after another. I'm frightened. And or you can say, wow, that was icy. I'm going to go and get some shoes or I'm going to make sure I get those little things to put on my shoes that help me to walk more uh, more, with more steady uh, foot. You know, I, I'm going to do something positive to, to actually prevent that from happening again. See what I mean? It's a different negativity bias. You can either say, um, you know, that's, that's a bad experience. I'm never going to walk on ice again. Or I'm never coming out in the winter months. Or you can say, um, I'm going to get some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that make this a lot easier. Um, you know, so I think getting some better boots or maybe um, work on my balance. You know, I, I remember I fell in, um, in Paris a few years ago, changed my life. It was a very um, dramatic fall, hurt myself pretty badly. And um, I, you know, from that, at that moment, I decided I was going to never wear high heel shoes again, ever. And for many years, I didn't. But, you know, I think what I, what, and I, I was trying there to deal with my negativity bias because I wanted to keep walking. I wanted to keep traveling. I wasn't going to let one bad fall in Paris, um, you know, stop me from uh, getting on my feet and going places. And, you know, so I, I actually I haven't worn high heel shoes since then. And I don't even miss them. I mean, I think I have a pair or two, but um, maybe I've worn it at parties. But um, I, I just, you know, I took what could be a negative bias to feel I'm weak. I'm not strong enough to be, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to just change the way that I walk or change the way that I dress. So I think that's really important. And I guess finally to say that, you know, negativity can be a learning experience. So if you've woken up this morning and you feel a little bit um, down, something you've read something or you've um, you know experienced something that's made you feel bad, I have a little negative tone to it. Just try to tw turn it around, accept it, let it go, 
and take some action to be, be positive. I know I sound like a bit of a Pollyanna here, like, I mean, sometimes negativity is pretty hard to, to deal with and you've got to be real. I mean, sometimes you are gonna have a bad day and that's fine, let it go. But other times, if you can keep a, a, a handle on it and manage your negativity bias, it's, it's a good thing. So, I just, um, I hope that's helpful. I, it's not meant to be a negative uh, conversation. It's really meant to be positive and constructive. And um, you know, thanks for joining in the conversation. I'd like to ask you though, do you find sometimes that you often focus on the negative aspects of a situation? You know, do you, do you sort of, are you able to break your negativity cycle and then get back on track with the day? Be really interesting to see what you know what bothers you and whether what you know whether you do have to deal with negativity uh, in your in your thoughts in your life and how you deal with it. Okay, everybody. Well, I do hope this has been a useful conversation and that you have a very positive day. That nothing negative affects you. And I will look forward to seeing you all back here again very soon. Take good care for now. Bye bye.